Hi there, I'm Mike, and this is our Wyoming Life. This is the calf warmer. It's the first time I've ever sat in it, and I have to say it's not very comfortable. But over the years, it saved a lot of calves' lives. Calving is coming up soon. In fact, we could have our very first calf any day now, and that means it's time to get ready for that time of year. Calving goes on for months. There are 160 pregnant cows out there, and every single one of them is crabby and tired of being pregnant. Some more than others. But ask any pregnant woman and I think that she'll tell you by the end she was probably ready to be done. And for me, that's when things start to get interesting. This is Marvin the Green Martian Calf Head and he's going to help us today as we take a look at the tools of calving. 90% of births out there are done without any help from me but that leaves 10% that are going to need some type of help. Whether it's help being born or medical help after they're born. That's 10% if the weather is perfect for calving. That means no heavy snow or no super cold temperatures. But if we do get a big spring snowstorm, that means wet and heavy snow. And then every single calf out there is gonna be depending on us to live. And those make for long days, as you're gonna find out. But before we get to those long days, we have to get ready. Somebody said that success is 90% preparation and 10% perspiration. We spend a lot of time here getting ready for calving because every calf that lives means success for the ranch. If a lot of calves die for some reason, be it a winter storm or disease, we have to make up for that income somewhere. And if 10% of calves need help being born or soon after and we're not there to help them, that could mean thousands of dollars that the ranch would lose. And in a worst case scenario, it could mean the end of the ranch. These are the tools of calving. I've organized them into categories of use. We have supplies and equipment used to assist deliveries, supplies and equipment used to get the calf up and going, supplies and equipment for treating baby calves, and supplies and equipment for treating the new mom cow. And of course, there's ear tags for record keeping. Let's start with delivery. During calving season, we check cows every few hours. By a visual inspection, we can tell who's getting close to having their calf, and we can learn who to keep an eye on. If a cow is having trouble delivering her calf, we may bring her into the calving barn. She will enter the barn through here and take a trip into a corral and a head gate. This gate will hold her head in place and allow us to work behind her safely. The lights come on and we can get to work. Disinfectants are very important. These cows roll around in who knows what, and we want to make sure we give the calves the best start possible, so cleanliness is paramount. In addition, we'd use a lot of lubricant to keep things moving along. We also have gloves, both regular surgical gloves and obstetric gloves. Let me put one of these on and you can use your imagination. Chains can also be used during difficult deliveries. These are looped around and each loop is placed around the calf's front legs. Using these handles, then we can apply tension and help pull the calf manually. Worst case scenario though, this is a mechanical calf puller. I've never used it. In fact, it scares the hell out of me and I wouldn't want to have to use it. Instead of being pulled by hand, you use this ratcheting system to apply tension to the calf. We can also administer drugs to the mom during delivery to make things go just a little bit smoother. Ace Promazine, a mild tranquilizer, lidocaine, which can be used to relieve pain and help the cow relax, and also oxytocin, which can be used to move labor along if the labor stalls or stops. After we have the calf out, well then it's time to treat the calf. In a perfect world, the calf gets up, drinks from its mom, and goes on about growing up big and strong. Sometimes they need a little help. Every calf around here gets a navel dip of iodine that keeps any bacteria on the ground from getting up in their umbilical cord. A calf that's down and can't get up and drink on its own well, it's going to need to be fed. If mom is unable to feed it, we have a few different options. One is that we try to milk mom and get that really good first milk called colostrum out of her to give to the calf. 
The first milk is important to a calf because it's packed with nutrients that they require and need to get their own stomachs up and going. It's one of those life and death things. If a calf is born in the pasture and doesn't get up to drink within a few minutes, we may actually go and get it and feed it ourselves. Mom's milk is best, but we also keep frozen colostrum on hand as well as colostrum supplement. Sometimes we're able to feed the calf with a bottle, but usually we have to tube the calf. A sick calf may not have the strength to suck, so we slip this tube directly into the calf's belly and give it milk that way, warming it from the inside. In addition, we can give the calf NurseMate, a gel of concentrated bioactives that will help the calf process its milk and colostrum better. We also have electrolytes to help treat dehydration. Medications are also available for the calf, including Nuflor to treat respiratory problems, Banamine for any type of swelling, LA-200, which is an antibiotic, Epinephrine, which can help get the calf up and moving, and Scour pills to treat diarrhea if it's present. Giving a calf a pill is actually pretty easy. Using this tool, you insert the pill into the back of the calf's throat and eject it as far back as possible. A new tool that we have this year is a calf resuscitator and aspirator kit from McCulloch Medical. When calves have stressful births, there is a possibility that a calf can actually breathe in mucus or amniotic fluid. We need to get that out. And this tool is placed over a calf's nose and mouth. The suction is activated and it will suck out the fluid. Then you spin it around and you can give the calf breaths of fresh air to help get its lungs working. In the past, we used to do this by lifting the cow up and letting gravity drain the fluid from its lungs, which can be a little bit difficult with a 100 pound calf. Then if the calf needed breaths, we would actually give the calf mouth to mouth. Hopefully this new technology will save lives here on the ranch and on other ranches as well. Once the calf is beyond any life-threatening situations, we can actually treat and evaluate the calf from there. Listening to their heart and lungs with a stethoscope and monitoring both calf and mom's temperatures, checking for anything from infections to hypothermia. New mom cows can sometimes need a little help at this stage as well. They might be running low on energy and they could require dextrose in IV or older cows might need calcium to get them up and moving after a really hard birth. In addition, we could end up with an orphan. When cows have twins, we normally take one of the twins from her. Two calves can be really hard on a cow, and we will bottle feed one of them to take some of that work off the cow. If another cow happens to lose her calf during that time period, then we can try to graft the twin calf to the lonely mom. This is orphan no more. It's a powder that you actually put on the back of an orphan calf. The foster mom will lick the powder off, forming a bond between her and the orphan, and soon, they are their own little family. I've had good luck with it, but it's one of those things you hope you never have to use. In fact, I hope I never have to use any of this stuff, but we will. And it's better to have it and never need it than to need it and never have it. One thing that we will use with every single calf is an ear tag. It's important to know which calf belongs to which mom for a number of reasons. You can learn who's a good mom, you can track growth, but one of the most important reasons is to reunite mom and calf. They will get separated and they will need help. This is another reason that we try to be present for each birth here on the ranch. It's easier to tag a calf that's newly born rather than trying to chase and catch one that's even a few hours old. Marvin will help us out again as we take a look at how tagging works. In a calf's ear, there are three arteries, one large vein, and three runs of cartilage. The trick is to tag the calf between all these obstructions to limit bleeding and pain for the calf. You load the tag gun, you place it around the calf's ear, and you squeeze. The calf may bawl, but it's an important step for identifying the calf and keeping them safe while they live here on the ranch. So there you go. It seems like a lot, but like I said before, you hope you never have to use it. Just let it sit and collect dust and let the medications, let them expire. Because if they do, that means we've had healthy calves. We'll check cows every couple hours for the next two months. <laughs> and we're going to lose a lot of sleep, but it's all worth it. 90% preparation, 10% perspiration. Well, whoever said that, 
probably didn't work on a cattle ranch. I'd call it 50-50. It pays to prepare, but don't let that fool you. There's still a ton of work to be done. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you stick with us as we head into spring and things heat up. It's an awesome response that we've gotten to this point, and I only see it growing, but that's with your help. Be sure to comment. We answer them all, and we love to know what you guys are thinking. And in fact, a lot of your questions actually give us ideas for new episodes. So I hope you have a great week. I hope you continue with us on the ride that is our Wyoming life. Mm -hmm.